who's uh, bike commuting already? Raise your hand if you're a bike commuter already. Ha <laughs> ha, this is gonna be easy. All right, good. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So just, uh, I think, down arrow. Okay, so you're gonna learn about gear, what kind of gear you need, how to plan for your trip, including routing and uh, making sure you're prepared, supply, and riding techniques to keep you safe. So I've seen a lot of experience in the room, so I'll try not to belabor any points here. Of course, you're going to want to Oh, good, a helmet, okay. And you don't want your helmet to look like a bonnet, okay? You don't want to wear it back on your head. You want it flat, level over your eyebrows. You have to be able to have about two fingers between your eyebrows and the helmet. Uh, low, level, nice and tight, okay? Scout, when you're wearing a helmet, you need to kind of tight here. Well, everybody, but the kids especially will say, it's too tight, I can't breathe. And if you're able to scream at me that it's too tight, it's not too tight. So, have it tight enough, put it on, and shake your head real hard, okay? Because if it's wobbling around and you go down, chances are it's going to pop off your head and it's not going to protect you there, okay? All right. You do want to buy an approved helmet. They've got stickers inside. I don't think they even sell so. unapproved helmets anymore. But I, I think I told you what you're going to get. You're going to get a helmet, a lock, and a light set. You do want to store your helmet inside. Don't leave it in the garage for years and years. They get brittle. They're just largely styrofoam, OK? So store it inside. And if you do crash, get a new one, because they can be damaged without visible uh, cracks or anything on the outside, right? Bright clothing. Nice, bright clothing, reflective. Don't be a bike ninja. Don't go around after dark in dark clothes without a light. We call that a ninja and that's dangerous. So nice and bright, closed toed shoes. Okay. Baggy pants. State law requires, if you are riding after dark or before dawn, state law requires a white front headlight visible from 500 feet and a red tail light or rear reflector visible from 300 feet. You gotta have it. Best lock choices. Now, my friends who are bike commuters, feel free to jump in. Uh, we think the U locks are pretty good, and that's what you're going to get today. Chain locks are okay. Um, I really like a bell or a horn or some way to let people know you're coming up behind them. Don't sneak up on people. That scares them and makes them mad. And if they jump the wrong way, you're all going to go down, right? Okay. Plan your trip. Oh, you know, Joe, would you use? Bill's bike just to show them how to lock a bike. We've talked about a lock, but does everybody know how to lock your bike so that you're not going to lose it? There's okay. a you lock in the back, Joe. All right. You, you want to make sure that you're locking not only the tire, because tires come off pretty easy, okay, especially in quick release. So you want to lock to the frame and the wheel and a stationary source, a stationary a parking meter or a bike rack or something like that. Ideally, you come through the, the wheel, through the frame, and you know, the bike rack, and get it all together. Yes. And then if you really want to be super secure, a second short you lock, you can lock your frame to your bike. Sometimes I'll use my cable lock, which isn't very effective on its own, but it's a secondary lock, and hit everything else. But uh, otherwise, otherwise, a second you lock for there is some place you're really worried about. Sadly, we've had lots of club members lose bikes. They just get snatched, don't they? And yeah. matching the color of your bike to your lock is not mandatory. That's option. <laughs> matching the bike to the, to the lock is option. Fashion. All right, thanks, guys. OK. Let's see what we got. OK, planning your trip. <clears throat> you want to plan your route in advance? Um, biking to work you almost never want to use the same route that you would drive to work. And the cool thing is, a lot of times, you can get places on a bike that you can't even see in a car. I love that, when you can use a canal or a pedestrian gate or a, you know, a bike path or something. So Google Maps does offer bike directions. If you're, if you're using Google Maps for directions, know that there's an icon for bike, for pedestrian, and for transit. And also in your kit today, you're going to get a paper map of all the bike lanes and routes and trails in the whole Metro Phoenix area. 
You want to do a quick check of your bike before you head out. A, B, C, Q, air, brakes, chain, quick release. Make sure it's uh, tight. Make sure nothing's going to fall off. And then check it over. Okay. Okay, taking your bike on transit. Is that, is that linked to a video or something? I don't think so. Let me tap on it and see what it does. We I go. went to the next one. All right, yeah. So most of our, all of our park and ride lots and transit centers have bike parking. Many of them have bike lockers. Have you seen a bike locker? We call them stealth infrastructure because they're kind of hidden. They don't look like a bike locker. They look like a utility, like an APS something or other, right? But most of the park and rides um, have them. Bring your own lock. Um, and if I were going to bike to work or bike to transit, I would go by first and have a look at that locker and make sure that it'll fit my lock. Because some of them will fit a big U lock and some of them will just fit a little padlock. Okay. And so if you're going to use a padlock, I strongly recommend you get the disc type. They're a lot harder to cut than. Um a regular padlock? Yeah. Sadly, times are, are a little hard and people are getting a little determined to take things that don't belong to them. So, yeah. All right. Any questions on that? Oh, and they're free. All of the, the use of all the, the uh, bike lockers is free, but I would re not recommend leaving your stuff overnight. Yeah, question. How long do you keep them in there? Say it again? How long do you keep them in there? Uh, they want you to not keep it longer than all day. They say don't leave stuff overnight. Um, they, yeah, and it depends on where where the bike is too. Like at uh, Central Station, uh, that's got security all the time, and they don't have much patience for people leaving stuff in there. They don't. They'll cut your lock and take your stuff. Yeah. Okay. You do want to be a defensive driver, even if you're in the right, because cars are much bigger than bikes. Okay. So pay attention to what's going on around you. Ride defensively. Share the road. Bikes have the same rights and responsibilities to the roads as cars. Same rules, same rights, same responsibilities. But again, smaller, less visible. Okay, keep going. Ride straight. If you're in a tight spot, uh, construction or heavy traffic, I like to ride straight, ride fast, and get the heck out of there. Okay, ride in a straight line. Don't weave. Try not to, I mean, if you have to go around a pothole, do what you need to do, but ride straight. Be predictable, be predictable. One reason the cars get cranky with us is because we scare them. They're a little afraid, okay? So be predictable, ride straight, keep going. Hand signals, everybody knows that, right? Left turn, on a bike, you can either do this for a right turn or like this, either way, stopping. There we go, turning left, slowing down. If you're in a group, I like to, haw to call out to do this or this and say stopping or slowing. You don't want to get run over by the guy behind you again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Always ride on the right, okay? And this is a mistake that a lot of parents make. They'll teach their children to ride on the left and they, it seems safer because you can see what's coming, but it is so not safer because picture yourself in a car coming out of this parking lot, okay? Where are you looking? You're looking left. You're looking for the traffic to come towards you. You are not looking right for a bike coming on the sidewalk. So don't do that. Such a bad idea. Yeah. Obey the signals. I can't say I always put a foot down depending on the intersection, but <laughs> set a good example. Yes, I don't run lights. I don't run lights because I, I feel like that sends the wrong message. And yeah, we don't need any more animosity from the car drivers, do we? Okay, bike lane merge. Sometimes you'll run out of bike lane at an intersection and you gotta move on. Pay attention. It's a learned skill to be able to look over your shoulder for traffic. You can do it. Practice it. Practice it when you're riding, okay? You can keep your head straight, look over, and merge. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me, bike and bus lanes. Move left when you're approaching the intersection. Gaps, pay attention. If there's a gap in the traffic and this guy's turning left, he may not see you, so just pay attention. Be real heads up. And when I'm in traffic, a lot of times if I'm at a light, keep going, um, sit up, be big, 
be physically large so that they can see you. Okay? Railroad tracks, especially down here, will be careful, especially if you're on a bike with skinnier tires, it will take you down. You want to ride across them at a right angle. School zones, uh, don't speed. No? Yep, don't speed through the school zones. You can, though. I mean, some, I have friends who can ride that fast, but don't. A bicycle right. will trip a school zone radar. Oh, good to know, Bill. <laughs> um, ride no more than two abreast. That's what the law says. And again, this is another situation where you want to be a good citizen because if you're riding, if you're riding in a group and you're taking up the whole lane, it might be safe that day. A car's not going to take on a whole group of bicyclists, but the next time that driver finds a bicyclist alone, he might be still cranky from having to wait behind 20 bicyclists who were hot in the road, okay? So again, that's just bad PR when you're hot in the road. Okay, there are two ways to turn left on a bicycle. You can choose. You can act like a pedestrian and go to the right and go through the crosswalk. If you're in the crosswalk, you are technically a pedestrian and you really should be off your bike and walking. But you can go across, cross twice, once, twice, or you can get over the middle and make a left turn from the left turn lane. I think the first one is called Copenhagen left. Yep. A Copenhagen left, okay. That's the, that's the that and that. And you can, if you have trouble figuring out what that is, I got online, you can actually see some videos on YouTube. So if you want to, yes. just Google like Copenhagen left and you can see how that's done in the video. Cool. All right. Comments? You know, use your best judgment depending on the intersection, which way you're going to do it. Okay. Bicycles, state law says bicycles are to ride as far to the right as is practicable. However, bikes have the right to move left to avoid debris in the road, to pass another bicyclist if they're preparing to make a left turn. And if there's not room for both width-wise, which that's probably the most important one. Yes, if there's, not, if there's not enough room for a bike and a car to safely share the lane, then the bike is allowed to take the lane. Again, be physically large. When I'm doing that, I try to sit up, look around. I smile at people <laughs> because it just kind of right? wave. Yeah, if somebody's nice to you, wave. And be very careful to use all your fingers. <laughs> Make sure they see you using all your fingers. <laughs> all right, pedestrians. Let's be nice to pedestrians, too. Use those bells. And um, my parents were in China. They didn't have bells. They rented bikes. They didn't have bells. They just rode around going ding, 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 <laughs> saying ding, ding, to let people know they were coming up behind them. Right? Not a bad idea. And do uh, give some space when you're passing people. Ooh, don't wear those headphones, you guys. You need to be able to hear what's coming up behind you. Headphones are not a good idea. Um, there are attachments that will mount on your handlebars that will still play your tunes. Just don't put the headphones in. You need to be able to hear what's coming up behind you. Hydrate or die is what the cyclists say, right? Bring plenty of water, drink before you go out, drink while you're out, drink some more when you get home, sunscreen, sunglasses, right? Yeah, try not to mix it up with drivers. Extra caution at sunrise or sunset, oh man, yeah, that's when you especially want the bright clothing and the reflective stuff. Sunset is tough. And bike laws do apply to those motorized bikes as well. What questions do you have? That was pretty short and sweet. All good? All right, I'm going to turn it over to my friend Joe Perez, who's going to talk a little bit about bike infrastructure and choosing your route.